It's Beer O'Clock and this is the Beer O'Clock Show where every week we indulge in some light-hearted beer-related banter. My name is Mark and joining me, all primed and ready for a night on the sods as we have two, count them, two beers to review, it's my old mucker and beer mentor, Steve. Hello, Steve. Hi, Mark. How you doing? I'm fine. I didn't sing this week. You'll be pleased know, to hear. A, that, that was a bit of an anti-climax after <laughs> half of the week. I loved all the positive comments. Well, the positive one... Po- no, it was negative. It was all negative. Yeah. I think, yeah. <laughs> it was... Uh, yeah. It was something different, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, Sparky said not to give up my day job unless it's singing, in which case to give up my day job. So <laughs> that was nice of him. Yeah. Anyway. At least, at least it shows you care. <laughs> at least it shows you listens. Uh, how has your week been beer-wise, buddy? Uh, it's been a good week beer-wise, mate. Yeah. Um, yeah, first first opportunity I had to get myself down to London Fields and neck a pint of Cannonball um, <laughs> since <laughs> since it was announced that it was on tap. And it was tasting great. Uh, I have to say it was tasting absolutely awesome. Um, so I, I popped down there for what ended up being a pint and a half of, of Cannonball um, before I met up with um, Justin and Ed and, and headed over to Duke's to to try the old uh, the barbecue offerings with some Beaver Town beers, which was a, a nice evening out. Yeah, what what's Duke's like? It's it's really strange actually because it's really deceiving. I was expecting something really kind of modern and. Um, kind of, you know, something different from what it was. But as it was, it's kind of situated in what must have been an old pub. Um, so it looks like your old sort of like corner of the road London pub, but inside it's all kind of modern and sort of like steel surfaces and, you know, pretty decent sized bar. So it was, it was good, uh, nice food, uh, good beer, as you would expect, that the, the beer was stunning. Um, but yeah, it's a, a pretty decent evening out. Is that the place where Beaver Town's on site? It's it's the place where Beaver Town started. Oh, I see. Um, okay. Which is which almost, almost nicely done there, mate. It's a little bit of a segue to next week's show because we've got <laughs> um, got an interview with with Logan on on next week's show from Beaver Town, and he talks about Beaver Town's humble beginnings um, out the back of uh, Dukes. So uh, hang on for that one next week. Yeah, that was purely intentional. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but beer wise as well from there I, I, I bought away with me a bottle of Holy Cow India Stout now, now this is the first time I've come across this style um, an India Stout um, and, and basically what it was it was everything that you would expect from a really tremendous stout so it was really creamy um, it had that lovely roasted notes in, in it there was chocolate, there was coffee but then it was like it had been packed with a fistful of hops that you just got coming through in, in the first sip, coming through at the end, and it was just a lovely combination of this kind of really hot forward IPA mixed with uh, a, an amazing stout. Okay. That sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah, you don't look like you can get your head around that one. No. <laughs> get a bottle of stout. Get a yeah. bottle of really hoppy IPA and just blend them together in a glass, and essentially that's what you get from from this. But so it's a it's kind of it was all right. It was all right. It was a decent beer. It was a really decent beer. Um, very well balanced. The, the flavours work really well together. Good. I'm pleased for you. I'm pleased it worked out. <laughs> Anything else that you want to report? No, that that was it, beer wise. What what about yourself, mate? You've been up to uh, had any beery adventures this week? Um, not really. We had a had a friend over on Saturday night, and he's into his ale a little bit. So, I had a few bottles in the fridge that I've been meaning to get to for ages. Um, so we just worked through those. So we had um, we had well, we basically shared bottles. We went through four bottles because we went out for tea. Um, we had the Dobber from Marble, which he found very nice. Um, had the Oladu 21 Year Special Reserve, which went down a real treat. That was lovely. Oh, Such good. a classy beer, that. Yeah. Um, then I made the mistake of following that up with um, Hillsides Over the Hill um, Multi Mild. Mm. And it just tasted of nothing after the Oladu. I should have done it the other way around. But, um, yeah, mate, have never you mind. learned nothing? <laughs> On this journey of ours, 
you, you should have started with the three point eight percent mild. I was just before... pulling out. I was pulling out the bottles that were nice as I was going. I was just pulling them out. You haven't seen my fridge. They're just bottles are rammed in quite randomly, so it's just whatever I could grab. <laughs> and I wanted to impress them with the Ola Do early, with the nice because it had the foil over the cap and everything. You can undo it like a bottle of wine, and it's got a fancy name. And no one's ever heard of Harvestoon unless you know beer. So, you know. <laughs> I, I can see you thinking behind that. I still can't believe you then tried to top it with an 8.3.8% yeah, like mild. There wasn't, much, there wasn't much thought in it beyond yeah, that. that just never going to work, mate. Uh, but it work. wasn't a bad beer. But after the older do, it kind of... I'll, I'll need to pick one up and have it on its own sim and judge it by its own merits. Um, and... Starting the entire night off with um was um a bottle of Ridge from Harvest Dune, which wasn't oh, bad. Right, yeah. Um, we've had that before, obviously, and that yeah. was it for me, really. Relatively quiet. Sounds one like last it was week. a pretty good evening for you, mate. A good little night. Anyway, enough of that. Stephen, Mark, we have um as I said at the top of the show, we have a double header review with we um do. two beers from a brewery that we've featured before. Um, but before we get to that, you need some pips, mate. I do. Let's let's have the pips. Beep 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 beep. Okay, so just uh three uh quickies this week. Um, just just firstly, uh, we've already mentioned them once. We're featuring them next week. Uh, Beaver Town officially launched their new tap room. Um, this past weekend. Um, that's now open every Saturday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's really, really easy to get to. Uh, you've just got to get to Tottenham House Station, and then it's a five-minute walk. Um, so if if you are fancying some amazing beers in a pretty decent environment, get yourself up to Beaver Town, their tap house, every Saturday, 11 to 5 p.m. Uh, more information, beavertownbrewery.co.uk. Uh, next up, uh, interesting announcement this week. Uh, London Beer City was launched now, this is going to be a week-long city-wide festival running from the 9th to the 16th of August. Um, there's going to be events at various pubs across London, bars and breweries. Um, there's going to be mini festivals, tap takeovers, and it's also being built around the London Craft Beer Festival, which launched last week. Now, interestingly, the um, whole thing has been... Uh, organised during the same week as the Great British Beer Festival, which is obviously in London, but they've not referenced it at all in any of the initial documentation. Now, um, I'm wondering if there's a reason for that or, or not, but I guess we'll see as weeks go on, because like I say, this is fairly fairly new news. Um, it's being organised, um, it's being coordinated by Will Hawkes, who's the author of Craft Beer London, um, which is the, 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 it's a book and it's an app that you can get for the iPhone as well. Um, and he's working closely with London Brewers Alliance to, to make the London City, London Beer City, um, a successful week. So that's the 9th to the 16th of August. More information, londonbeercity.com. But we'll, we'll, we'll keep you up to date with news about the events that's going on as we get it. Um, and then finally, uh, another festival coming up in October, the International Craft Beer Fe Festival, Craft Beer Calling, will be taking place somewhere <laughs> up north. Newcastle, I think it is. Yes, there we go. Missed that piece of information on my notes. <laughs> um, Newcastle's first International Craft Beer Festival, Craft Beer Calling, taking place 24th, 26th of October. Uh, around 50 craft breweries, uh, you know, it's it's your normal names that you're beginning to expect. So, Beaver Town, Five Points, Magic Rock, Camden, Thornbridge, Weird Beard, Adnams, all involved. Um, for more information, website's a bit more difficult for this one. Um, Ticketweb.co.uk, and then probably just best to search for craft beer calling. Um, because the address is one of these that's got backslashes and hyphens and numbers and all sorts. <laughs> um, so that's the International Craft Beer Festival Craft Beer Calling, taking place in Newcastle, 24th to the 26th of October. And so end this week's news. 
Very good, very good. Okay, in this week's featured beer, or featured beers, our tea from Hogstar, the little sound in the background you can hear, is um, David Patterson from Hogstar Brewery. He's very kindly joining us tonight for this review of two interesting beers. One being the Hogstar New English Craft Lager from Hogsback. And the other one being an even more interesting... <laughs> Montezuma's Chocolate Lager. Yeah, that's going to be very interesting indeed. So let's kick off the night with getting into this lager while we have a little bit of a chat with David. So David, welcome to the show. It's great to have you along. Thank you. Um, Steve, do you want to start peppering our guest with questions, mate? <laughs> just, just straight in like straight, that Straight in. I'm, I'm um, getting into this beer. Okay, yeah. Uh, hi, David. How are you doing? Um nice. So we're doing two of your beers tonight, which I seem to be having trouble actually opening this evening. Um, I'm, I'm, both of them have got a little bit of a backstory to them, um, and I'm quite intrigued to, to get into the story of the of the Hogstar Lager because that went through um, a couple of changes, didn't it, before it got to to where it is now? Yeah. Well, we um, what did we do? We we, we sort of started. Sorry, take that back one more stage. Uh, what did we do? We, we, we started uh, the process of looking to develop our own lager probably, well, maybe just a little bit before this time last year. Um, Hogsback Brewery never done a lager before. And what we really wanted to do was look to make a beer that sort of stood out a little bit from the crowd. So we knew that we wanted it to mature over a long period of time. We knew we didn't want to produce a pasteurized beer. And we knew we wanted something with a bit more flavour and character. So we sort of came upon the fact that we would only ever sterile fill. And as far as possible, we'd make it as fresh as we could. Uh, so that was a sort of the starting brief as well. Uh, we then uh, brewed our five variants uh, of Hogstar. Uh, as it turned out, we should just have stopped at the first one because that's the one that we went with. <laughs> uh, but the others had had slight variations on a theme. So, for example, the second lager that we brewed had a Belgian yeast in it. Um, and then the other three had variations on either numbers of hops or slight changes in terms of um, other sort of base ingredients. So, um, yeah, it took us quite a while. Um, and then when we uh, when we actually had what was essentially a, a, a decent enough beer, uh, we put it out into the local free trade and sold it through our own shop, uh, and let customers decide which one was uh, was the best. Uh, and it turned out that the first one that we brewed was the one that everybody liked, so uh, that's what we went with. Um, so essentially, what I'm telling you is we wasted an awful lot of time <laughs> <laughs> in producing the very first beer that we wanted. Yeah. Um, and, and you've recently just installed some new kit as well, haven't you? So you can produce a lot more of this. Yeah, we've we've uh, the, the 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 blessing and the curse of uh, of this beer uh, is that we mature it over the, the the full brewing process is about six weeks, and we mature it for at least uh, four and a half, if not five weeks, to get the the flavours that we wanted. The blessing of that is that you produce a fantastic beer that's quite complex and, and, and actually for a lager has a sort of a depth of flavour that you might not necessarily anticipate. Um, the curse is you're tying up a lot of capacity. So if we brew sort of 80 barrels at a time, that's uh, not too much fermentation capacity, but it's conditioning capacity that's, that's taken up. So then it becomes either very expensive in terms of time or, or it becomes very demanding in terms of what beers you can't then put in that conditioning, uh, in those conditioning tanks. Does that, that sort of make sense? Yeah. yeah. So we just installed a, a dual-purpose vessel that takes about 80 barrels, and that's the first of six, uh, and and that one's already full. So um, we, we, we've only, only had it in about a week and a half. Already full with the lager. Yeah, full of lager. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've I've got mine out of the bottle. Finally, now I finally yeah. managed to get a cap off the, the, the <laughs> bottle. Um, so, 
hell of a struggle that was this evening. Um, and it's, I mean, it's it's poured a, a, a lovely. It's it's almost darker than what you'd normally expect from from a lager. There's there's a slightly orange hue to it, and it's yeah. um, got a slight haze in there as as well. Yeah. Um, aroma wise, the, the potential for that is obviously it's not it's not pasteurized at all. So it's been it's been sterile filled, which might mean uh, that you would get a, a slight chill haze if it's been in if it's been in the fridge for too long. But there's there's no sort of uh, there's no issue with that. Well, it looks good and it, it smells it smells really cracking as well. It's, it smells really soft and fruity, and I'm actually I'm quite looking forward to getting tuck in, stuck into this one this evening. Yeah, same. Good. So, um, Steve, shall we get into it, mate? Yeah, let's let's um let's give it a go. Cheers. Cheers, mate. That is a lovely smooth lager, David. That's incredibly Brilliant. smooth. Brilliant. That's good. Yeah. That good. that's the one thing yeah, that got... really leaps out. Our head brewer Miles Chesterman, who uh, who has just become a, a father for a second time, so congratulations to him. Uh, has has worked very closely with um with the recipe to make sure that we are, as I said, you know, because we cold filter, because we cold condition for uh, for about four and a half weeks. Um, that we get the balance of, of the beer right. Uh, there's a significantly less carbonation as well. So a- any carbonation that's in in the bottle is 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 virtually all natural. So it should be something that's uh, that's sort of very very sweet. I think the other thing is the more carbon carbon dioxide you put in there uh, into a beer, the, the more it sort of hides a multitude of sins. So you know, hopefully, uh, it, it, you should get plenty of taste as well, and not obstructed by by a very gassy, a very gassy beer. You're getting a that, lot of. That's the one thing. Go on, mate. I was going to say you get you get a lot of really sweet fruits coming out of that. On the nose, yeah. it's really nice. Yeah, yeah. So we've got um, there's there's five hops in there. You've got. Um, some of them you'd anticipate to have in, in, a, in a lager. Uh, you've got Ter- Tetnanger, Hersbrucker, um, there's a little bit of Cascade and Centennial, and then traditional Fuggles as well. So, um, yeah, all, all good. It's a, it's a, it's a lager yeast. Um, so we, we haven't gone for a, a, a Carlsberg Genesis, so it's less harsh, perhaps, than you might anticipate. If, you know, for example, if we'd use a, a yeast you're usually find in a, in a pilsner, you get that sort of harsh, bitter bitterness on the end, mm-hmm. which I think we've, we've kind of avoided, I hope, with this yeast. Yeah, I tend to try to avoid lagers purely because of what you're saying there, that kind of aftertaste that you get, um, which I don't find particularly pleasing. But I'm finding this really easy going, and it's really, I don't know, it's just a really nice soft mouthfeel to it, and it's got that sweetness to it. It's really nice. Good, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, finding it very well balanced. Um, it's it's going down very very easily, very very smoothly, and and I think that the, the point you make there about the 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 lack of carbonation in it, as as opposed to to what you would get from other lagers, that that just helps with that smoothness, and mm. and and the finish is just it's such a it's almost a dry finish with with an ever so subtle bitterness to it but it's 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 a very pleasing finish to the drink i i think i think one of the keys to a lot of the beers that we we um we brew um is that we try to brew with with a degree of sort of residual sweetness left in there and that's that's not because um you know we don't we don't like producing sort of bitter beers at all it, it, it's actually that we we want to brew so that people want to drink more of it so, so we don't brew really unbalanced beers either in terms of malt or in terms of hop, and um, and this is quite a challenge when you're doing when you when you're brewing something like a lager, but you don't want it to be so anonymous like a you know like some of the more mainstream brands, uh, but but equally you don't want it to be sort of completely lacking in in, in depth. So we we hope we've sort of tread trod trodden. A, uh, a sort of a, 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 a middle middle course, um, and produce something that is, as you quite rightly say, you know, very well balanced, very sort of drinkable, but also has a bit of depth and character to it. So um, I hope that's the way it comes across. Indeed, it's incredibly easy. I've, I mean, I've, 
I'm finishing my bottle right now. So that that went down far too quickly, far too easily. Um, yeah, we, we we were also very conscious that if you do produce a very very easy drinking beer, that you don't want it to be too high in ABV. No. <laughs> and and I think the level of hoppiness isn't then sort of further enhanced by it being very very strong in terms of ABV. ABV. So sort of reasonably sessionable at four and a half, but not so you know bonkers mad that you're going to get um, going to get sort of you know out of hand on it. So. Indeedy. Well, I've finished my bottle, and I think Stephen has as well. Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm done. I, I enjoyed that <laughs> thoroughly. Um, um, yeah, we... That's uh, that's two for two so far, David. With that's the second time we've featured one of your beers, and yeah. um, the second time it's gone down very, very easily. Cool. So now on to the weird one. Good. <laughs> right, well, D- David, give us give us the background Ooh. to this chocolate lager. Um, as as I'm cracking it and pouring it. Every time I tell this story, I sort of uh, <laughs> I, I I always start from the position of uh, you know, what what do you really want to do when you brew beer? You want to brew something that everybody loves, uh, and uh, we we got together with with a chocolate company, uh, and the chocolate company's name is Montezuma. Um, they are a chocolatier. They, they are fabulous people, absolutely lovely people. Uh, superb company. And if you ever get the chance, hunt out uh, Montezuma chocolate because they make some fantastic stuff. And, and if you're into sort of reasonably weird and wonderful in, in your chocolate, you know, they're the guys for you. We've known them for quite a while. Uh, and, uh, and we all sort of sat around a very large table. Uh, with with the chocolatiers at one end and and the brewing nerds at the other, and we're saying, look, we want to produce a beer together. What can we do? What what kind of beer could we produce? Um, and all the brewery guys from Hogsback are sat down one end, going, okay, well, this is going to go into uh, our darker beers. It's going to go into OTT. It's going to go maybe may, maybe tea, possibly rip. Uh, okay, it, it, but it'll be one of these. So we tried them all. Uh, and it worked really well, you know, using using their chocolate in our beer worked fantastically well. But then they sort of said, well, what about that one at the end, you know, like the mad cousin under the stairs, which was the Hogstar <laughs> Lager. And, uh, and, and, and much like pretty much anyone that you say, we've just developed a chocolate lager to, we said, you can't do a chocolate lager. Uh, and they said... Why not? So, obviously, this could have gone on for a very long time, this conversation. But uh, we thought, well, what the heck, let's have a go. So um, so we added their chocolate to our lager uh, and brewed a batch up. And, uh, and lo and behold, we came up with Montezuma chocolate lager. Okay. The way the, the, the sort of um, the biggest reaction, not just from them, but then from other people with whom we tried it. Uh, and we sort of thought, well, we could make another dark chocolate beer, and we could make another beer that sort of kind of didn't surprise anybody. And, and, and also, we could make another beer, as I was sort of saying at the beginning, but perhaps almost everyone would say, brilliant, finally a beer that really tastes of chocolate, um, but why do the easy one? So, so it was the lager that we went with. So the base is is Hogstar Lager, and because chocolate is pretty much fat, you can't introduce fat into beer clearly. So we had to make a distillation from uh, not just the chocolate, but also the chocolate nibs. And and this particular chocolate that's used in this beer is a chocolate uh, from Montezuma called Lordy Lord, which is a, a dark chocolate but with cocoa nibs in. So we had to make the distillation from the nibs. And from the chocolate, and then add it late in the brewing process. And what we've come up with is a beer that has that sort of hop, the balance of the hog star underneath it, but then you have the chocolate flavouring and and uh, and the sort of the hints of, of chocolate that almost ride on the back of these five hops. And when the beer is very warm, absolutely smacks you in the face. But when the beer is quite chilled, hopefully. 
uh, is a sort of, although a fairly dominant flavour, uh, is one that's both surprising uh, and hopefully quite sort of uh, unusual and challenging. So does that all sort of make sense? It does, yes. It, it, abs absolutely, yes. Um, so, so essentially what we've got is we've got the, the same base beer as that we've just drunk. Yeah. We've added chocolate. Now, yeah, this, yeah. this is absolutely so, so, so... thrown... I was just going to say, this This has absolutely thrown me, because while you've been explaining the process there, I, I've cracked mine and poured it into the glass. Now, the aroma that I'm getting from the bottle is all chocolate. The aroma I'm getting from the glass is all lager. Now, what's going on <laughs> there? Because that's... I'm, I'm getting chocolate here. I'm now sniffing the bowl. I'm getting chocolate from the bowl, and I'm sniffing the glass, and I'm getting lager. Well, it, it's just yeah. so That's weird. what's known as beer, beer, beer sleight of hand. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard that one I, before. I, I, I can't explain that. Um, no, no, I can't explain that at all. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it, as I, I was, I sort of was saying, saying previously, it's, uh, it's an oddity. And, and we're actually perversely proud of having developed a, a beer that is uh, that's actually really challenging, uh, and and uh, we you know what we we understand that it's not going to be to everybody's taste. You know there'll be some people who who, who who clearly view us as some sort of beer heretics from for even having tried. Uh, but but it's a, it's it's interesting because if that was let's say that that was cherry in there, then people would sort of been a lot more accepting of it. Uh, and we kind of just said, well, you know, chocolate can be a, a, a flavouring as well as a something that sort of totally dominates a, a, a yeah. beer. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand why you're getting <laughs> why you're getting one smell from one thing but not from the other. <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm, I'm getting underlying chocolate from the glass, but I'm getting more I'm getting a more overpowering sense of chocolate from the bottle. Okay. Um, but all this smelling and talking is doing me no good. I, I've, I've got to get into this. I've, I've got to give this a go. Um, One so for the second time this evening. <laughs> cheers. Oh, cheers. Or is it, are you coming in there with something, Mark, before I, I get no. into the chocolate lager? You, you go ahead, mate. I was just going to okay. say, okay. when I poured this out, I was expecting it to be a chocolate-coloured beer. I was expecting it to be a darker beer, but it's not. It's just It looks like a pint of lager. Yeah. But it has that yeah. underlying scent. I'm getting that. It's funny, like there's that really bitter chocolate scent at the bo underneath everything, with a slight yeah. sweetness over the top from the milk chocolate, from the nibs that yeah. you put in. It's a fascinating smell to it, and you obviously you're also getting that lager scent coming through as well. So everything that comes with the lager. Yeah, yeah. It's um. It's it's really good when, when we when we sort of tasted this and 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 another thing that sort of it was was interesting was um the the sort of the biggest reaction that we tend to get is from uh is actually from men who who think that you brewed a beer specifically aimed at women which is was never the intention at all and uh, um, um, and again most folks are sort of you know a bit surprised but 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 possibly sort of some split around sort of sixty forty. Uh, that, that like as opposed to don't like it. Um, but even the ones who sort of don't like it after they've had one or two sort of then come back to, to sort of saying, well, you know, actually it's not that bad. So it's yeah. interesting. And we've got some people who absolutely adore it. And we've got to, we've got a couple of, um, we, we export quite a, quite a bit of beer now, which again is a comparatively sort of recent thing um, for, for the Hogsback Brewery anyway. Um We've we've got quite a couple of uh, we've got two countries in particular who really want it to uh, to be exported, uh, and that's the states and uh, and Russia, oddly enough. But uh, I, can't, I can't explain that one away either. <laughs> well, I, I just had my first mouthful, and it's fascinating how the how the, ta the, t the t tastes change just while it's in your mouth and hovering on your tongue. You're getting like this swirl of. Bitterness and sweetness, then smokiness, then bitterness and sweetness. It's weird, but it's yeah. it's interesting as well. I'm not sure, I'm not quite sure if I like it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I, we, we've I, actually... I agree with what... Sorry, go on. Uh, I, I agree with what you're saying there, Mark. It's it is really strange. It's like 
every one of your senses is telling the telling you that what you're drinking is isn't a lager. It's it's you, you know you've you've seen that it's a chocolate lager. You've smelt that it's a chocolate lager. You, you get that initial chocolateiness on 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 the taste, but then that you get the waves of the lager coming through again. But then the chocolate comes back as 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 as, as a hint at the end. And it's it's just really really strange. It's 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 probably one of the the, the strangest beers that I've ever drunk, to, to be honest. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. But for... it's it's not forget that's the that's the great thing. <laughs> We've we found um, on one of the one of the, the best gauges for us of of the success or otherwise of of a beer. Or, or, or indeed, uh, we, we also we also do a cider as well. Um, is is on our tours, and we get some fantastic feedback on the tours because obviously you know we've got um, well we've got a, a captive audience apart from anything else, so they're not allowed to go until they've tried everything we've got. <laughs> um, but, Sounds but, like my sort of tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it, <laughs> it's it's very popular. Yeah, um, but, but but what we what we we really like to do is to get the feedback on it. So when we were originally putting together um, the, the the lager in the first instance, and then latterly the chocolate lager too, you know, we had a fantastic. We get probably about two hundred people or so going through uh, on on the brewery tours a week, um, and that's a really good pool of people to sort of draw uh, comments from. And and this always tends to be one of those ones where it, of of everything that we do, this is the marmite one. You know, this is the one where people actually say. Love it, don't like it. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, you know, it gives you some sort of faith that actually what we have done is, as you said before, it's a very a strange beer. The the best sort of feedback we've had so far from people is in matching it with food, and there's been some really interesting ones that have said it. Go, uh, firstly, like like I guess lots of beers that are drunk cold, it goes very well with spicy food. But for this one in particular, Mexican food seems to be uh, seems to be the sort of food of choice to match with. Okay. So, uh, so, so we may have actually produced uh, uh, produced a beer that's ripe for export to Central America. I think. And you got the name for it as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that was planned. Yeah. I I can see that. I I can see what you're saying there, David. And I and I do think this would match match really well with a Mexican meal. Um, it's it's interesting. One one of the things that we said there about the, the sweetness of it. I was expecting it to be really sweet and to have been really yeah. sweetened by the chocolate, but actually it's come through and and it it it's not. It's just there as it's just there as a hint. It's there enough to let you know that it's there. Yeah. But strangely, it works. <laughs> and I know I'm surprised there, sorry. No, I, I, I was just going to say, I know it's how I sound surprised there, but I, I don't know whether I was not expecting it to work, but it, it does work. Chocolate lager works. <laughs> I'm not convinced. <laughs> I'm not no. exactly sure what I think of this. I, I think I prefer the normal Hogstar, to be honest with you. Yeah. But I, again, I wasn't quite sure what I was expecting from this. But it, it is a very I, I interesting I think beer. I want to try it with a Mexican meal. Yeah. That's That's yeah. what I think. Yeah, some something something with sort of a, like chipotle or something in there, and this would yeah. really pick up on it. That's yes, ab- absolutely. Ma- maybe you could do a version of it with some chipotle in there as as, as well, um, <laughs> a, a spiced chocolate. So lager. That was... chili, chili chocolate lager. Chili chocolate that's lager. That's... <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah. your next one. <laughs> I I think even for us that's. Possibly a step too far. Yeah, let's just segment their audience even further, Steve. Yeah, we we yeah. we get obviously to come out with our Cornetto beer. That's that's our next uh, exploratory oh. road. That good. <laughs> it's been. I tell you what, what has been very interesting though, as a sort of a, as a process, is it, it's kind of opened us up to quite a few other opportunities. Oh, sorry. A few other sort of brewing brewing processes that we've we've um, we've long sort of wanted to do, but we you know we are a reasonably sort of traditional brewer. You know, our, our ale portfolio 
um, we could be accused of, of, of not really being particularly sort of groundbreaking in, in the past. We're just about to launch one of the hoppiest beers that we've ever produced, which is a, a beer called Surrey Nirvana, which I think will be quite good fun. And then we've also, uh, we're just in the process of developing um, uh, a Damson Porter. And, and that will be our first, uh, our first fruit beer. So the really good thing about this is that I think it's beginning to sort of challenge us not just in terms of you know having having made something in conjunction with, with another company and don't forget you know we, we brew this in, in in conjunction with Montezuma the chocolatiers and they love it they think it's great and and a lot of their customers think it's great as well which is which is obviously fantastic uh, and and they have a different palate to uh, to us as sort of beer people uh, I, I guess and they're maybe a bit more accepting I don't know but uh, of something this sort of kind of challenging. So I think it's made us think more about what we brew, how we brew, and maybe what we'd really like to do in the future and, and to sort of do different stuff. Um, so whilst I don't think we will be doing a Cornetto beer and, and possibly chili, chili chocolate lager would be, would be one heresy too far, <laughs> uh, it, it's kind of opening the doors maybe to doing other stuff. And, and one of the things that we really, we really do want to sort of crack on with is this beer and food matching sort of idea. And I know, you know, lots of people talk about it, but I think it's real, it, 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 it's, it's a real, um, we, we've seen the growth in it, not just on the tours, but we've seen the growth, we've been being sort of, generally speaking, requested quite a lot to go and do beer and food matching. Um, uh, not just you know, ac across the southeast, um, and and this is another way of get, just you know, using Montezuma chocolate lager as, and and say matching it with Mexican food, is a fantastic way to break down the idea that the only thing you can drink with certain food types is whatever it might be, and and usually it's wine, obviously. So I think you know doing things like this, slightly more experimental um, beers is. is is taking us in different directions, which is always good. Always good fun, anyway. Indeed. Yeah. Steve, Maybe. do you have anything for David before we wrap this up, mate? Um, <clears throat> um, no, I'm just sorry. I was just finishing my chocolate lager there, which I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed. Um, n no, I, I know um, from from chatting to, to David in the in the run up to tonight's show that. Um, David's kindly offered to uh, give one of our listeners uh, a prize of some Hogstar beers. Um, and also, he's going to set us a question as, as well um, <laughs> for, for that as, as, as well. Now, I, I've seen some of the suggestions of the questions on, on email, so I'm a little bit worried about what he's going to come out with right now. Um, but, but, but David, what's, what's the question and, and what's the prize that you're offering one lucky listener? Uh was it, did we sort of go for a, was it a, a case of Hogstar? Was it? I, I, I think it I think it was, and it, maybe if there's any of the chocolate lager left, maybe we, you could throw one of those in as a joker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we could. Yeah. We could. Uh, we maybe the uh, maybe the runner up can get Montezuma lager. <laughs> we we don't do runners up on this show. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll do a, a, a prize to the winner of a combination of Hogstar and uh, and Montezuma. Yeah. Okay. okay brilliant. F fantastic. Thank you, David. And and what's what's the question? What's what's the question that you're going to set? Okay. I, I won't go with the first question that I asked. Partly <laughs> partly because there's a number of of words in there that I probably shouldn't be saying on 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 some sort of <laughs> Uh, the, the question would be: We've we've literally just planted our uh, revival hop garden, and we have planted two types of hop. Uh, so the question is: What two types of hop have we planted in our hop garden? Ah. Get to it, kids! Excellent. And if people can tweet <laughs> us. Tweet us the answer to that question by 6 p.m. on Friday the 25th of July. We'll, we'll then um, either give one person who's managed to get the question bang on right the, 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 the prize, or we'll, we'll put all of the right answers into a hat and we'll, we'll draw them out. Yeah. <laughs> Great. 
So that's tweet tweet your answers to us. Uh, what two types of hop is David growing in his garden um, by the 25th of July at 6 p.m.? Cool. All right, David, thanks very much for being part of the show. We appreciate you coming on. Thank you, David. No, you're more than welcome, gentlemen, and, uh, and thanks for having us. And, and thank you for the beers as well. We do appreciate yes. um, brewers supporting what we're doing on the podcast. Yeah, not, not at all. We're d- d- delighted to help in any way we can. Excellent. Thank you, mate. All right. See you later. Okay, so that was David Patterson from the Hogsback Brew. We had a few technical issues getting him onto the show and also during the recording, so apologies if you get any feedback or anything like that. But it was that was a great little chat we had with David then. Yeah, so it's always always good to have uh, the brewers on the show with us. Yeah, um, I do I do like getting the insight from them. So let's roll on with the little fi- few final bits we have before we say goodnight. Um, Instagram of the week, mate. Oh, mate, this is the the, the hashtag prize. This prize <laughs> is 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 turning into a is, into a hard beca- fought competition. It's every becoming week. a battle, isn't it? It, it is, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I had I had a real challenge choosing a winner this this week, um, and I'm going to give some mentions before I go with the winner because there are there are three mentions that I want to that I want to put out. Um, firstly, um, at Adam Nick, um, who has, has has been on Twitter with us before. Um, he posted a picture that had had a Tour de France theme to it, um, which I thought was nice. Um, it was um, topical, um, but it wasn't what we were looking for this week. So uh, nice try, Adam. Okay. Um, and and then um, our our regular uh, poster on Instagram, Plim Sean One Hundred and One. Um, Posted a, a picture, kind of jumped the gun a little bit again here, Sean. Posted a picture of a lager and a bag of chocolate. I could see where he was going with it, but he was possibly a few hours too early w- with it because that, that's probably what we would have been looking for this week. But nice nice try, Sean. Um, and then um, also a uh, friend of the show and hashtag some random bloke off Twitter at 1970s boy is, is starting to get in on the action on Instagram <laughs> as well. Um, didn't get the Instagram of the week this week, Justin, um, but I just had to mention you because you've got to stop posting pictures of beer that I want to drink because it's <laughs> it's that's not going to help you win the prize. He's always going to be first, though. I, I know, but he just posted some incredible beers this week. So um, this week's Instagram of the week the hashtag prizeless prize winner goes to at fantastic film ENG who posted a picture of a uh, hogsback tea which we featured earlier on in the show he called it the Boston Tea Party to fit in with the American theme that we were running last week and he also made it look like there was steam coming off the top of this <laughs> cup of tea so um, ENG at fantastic film great picture um, that's already up on our Instagram account if people want to have a look at that. But you are the prize this prize Instagram of the week. <laughs> Yay! Congratulations. Enjoy your prize this prize. You get now nothing. Yep. <laughs> Apart from the recognition of millions yeah. hearing your name on the podcast. <laughs> oh, no, you can Instagram us every week at Beer O'Clock Show on Instagram with the hashtag Cheers Guys. And you too could be in the winning, in the running for the prizeless prize. Basically, um, send us a picture of a bottle of beer. Try and do it as fancy as you can or not. It's up to you. We enjoy seeing all of your submissions. And Steve picks a winner on every show. And, and this week, we'll be giving bonus points for any pictures that include beer and chocolate. Mm. Get gramming. <laughs> You're down with the kids. Oh, yeah. uh, um, we mentioned this last week, but we're going to mention it again because it's quite a big deal, and we're going to men- be mentioning it a whole lot more up until the end of the season. And that is our September. Is it September or is it October? September. September. Lock in. Supported by Thornbridge. Steve. Details are on the website, uh, aren't sa- they? They're up on the website. Uh, look along the little tab at the top. 
click on the lock in it'll give you all the details of what we're doing all the people that are appearing on the uh, initial broadcast and it will also suggest that if you want to be part of the broadcast to DM us to let us know and we will add you to a waiting list yeah and that uh, waiting list is not, growing it is uh, we're not expecting everybody to stay on as, as long as we do so as soon as somebody drops out we will send you an invitation to join the hangout. Yeah, people are coming along. The locking. <laughs> people are coming along from the UK, from the US. It should be quite a good night. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Pretty good. The details are up on the website now. Yeah, and also on the website you can see the season four beer list. At the bottom of which are the discount codes you can get from Ales by Mail, Honest Brew, and the. Other one I always forget. Beer Boutique. Beer Boutique. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> they have a, a little discount there that you can pop a coupon code in with your order. Order any beer from our beer list and you get a discount off your entire order. So go there and have a little bit of a shop. That's just, yeah, great. Cool. So the website <laughs> is... <laughs> Seamless. <laughs> oh, I'm so on top of things tonight. That Montezuma has confused me. <laughs> the website is beeroclockshow.co.uk the twitter account is twitter.com slash beeroclockshow and our instagram is beeroclockshow as well steve is on untapped at beeroclockshow steve i'm there at roku r-o-k-k-u we're getting a lot of people joining us on untapped so add us as friends we'll add you right back and we love to see what you're drinking and getting your feedback on what we drink when we get around to it Right, Steve. I think that's it, mate. That 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 is that's that's it for this week. Yes, what two beers. What are, two beers done. Two beers. That's nothing compared to next week. Next week's gonna be a shocker, oh, mate. Next week, <laughs> already, or, I'm already thinking about calling it the mega show because I just I don't see how we're gonna top what we're gonna do next week. <laughs> should, 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 should we tell people? Should, should we share? First of all, let's say who we got coming along. Mr. Yes, Pallet let's. himself, the king some of taste buds. Some random bloke off Twitter. Some random bloke off Twitter who Steve met in some random pub just on a whim. It turned out to be someone who actually knows a little bit about beer. He's got yeah, the most you know. amazing palate in Christendom. Justin, 1970s boy. He's coming along. And we are he drinking. Is. What are we drinking next week, mate? I'm scared. We are drinking next week. Is a it's a special. It's kind of it's all through the two parts of season four. We've been featuring a range of London breweries. We've been doing interviews with head brewers and people that work at the brewery. Um, next week is kind of the finale of that series. It's the special. We, we've saved the. The, the the biggest to last. Um, what we're doing is we're we're, we're featuring Beaver Town next week. Um, now, unless you've had your head buried in the sand for the last four weeks, you could not have missed on social media that Beaver Town have started canning their beers. So um, we, uh, courtesy of Logan up at Beaver Town, who has given us the entire range of their cans <laughs> to drink on the show. That's not one can. That's not two cans. It's not three. It's five cans of, of, of beer that, that, that they currently have on offer. And we're not and sharing we're doing... these five cans. <laughs> we've got one each. No, we, no yeah, we've got one <laughs> each. Um, we're not messing around next week. We're, we're doing five reviews of five beers with Mr. Pallet hashtag some random bloke off Twitter um, and if that wasn't enough there's also going to be an interview with Logan Plant who's the, the, the founder and, and head of uh, Beaver Town which you do not want to miss because it is an amazing insight into the growth of Beaver Town but Logan also goes into the individual beers as, as well that we'll be drinking so he kind of talks a little bit about what we should be expecting from each one so next week is going to be a pretty big show yeah I have to prepare myself I've got to get mate you don't have to net the cans in <laughs> one go you, you don't I don't know how many times I have to tell you this Let's just do tasters, <laughs> and and then 
do they basically do, do little... ready-made beer shots. They, they are ready-made nano kegs, beer shots, call them what you will. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe neck the neck oil, which is what we'll be starting with. Okay. But really, don't do it with all of them. I, I need you to still be with it to stop the recording <laughs> at the end. Oh, I'll run out of hard drive, hard drive space eventually. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me. Okay, mate, I think that's about it. Next week is going to be epic. This week was a great show, really good chat with David. And, yeah, we're getting closer to the end of the season and ever closer to we the lock-in. Yes, looking forward to... Uh, not looking forward to the end of the season, definitely looking forward to the lock-in. Yeah, me too. Right, hey, until sir. next week. Cheerio, Highlight mate. of my week. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Bye.